Our first song this morning is going to be number 335, Sing and Be Happy. Sing and Be Happy. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul at all. Be faithful, look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems our fortunes of earth frown and pass us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust Him who leads you, He will keep your soul at all. Be faithful, look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Now Steve will have some announcements for us. Good morning, everybody. I know you're all kind of chilly and stiff, but uh, A, it's not raining. So, and next week it looks like 70, so, okay. Well, anyway, just a few announcements before uh, we continue in our worship. Um, continue to remember Bonnie and the passing of her brother, Dean England, and also uh, Spray, Stephanie Sprague, the passing of her father. So let's continue to remember them. And also, last week, you know, we um, Don Ash's mother passed away, and he just wanted to, we got a little card to thank you for the prayers, the cards, and uh, uh, for all the, uh, during their time. So, and it's been a tough week for, for several, and we just continue to pray for them. Um, Claudette also talked to Pam Arthur yesterday and thank you for the beautiful flowers that the church sent for Willard and his funeral. So she wanted to thank. <clears throat> and also thanks from Sue Goodman for the prayer and cards for her mom for her birthday. And Sue is here today and let's continue. It's good to see her and continue to remember her in our prayers. And also Rick Arthur's brother is very ill and he's still in the hospital. So let's continue to remember him. Um, I think, uh, other than that, um, I know we're keep working and pretty soon we'll have to be inside. So it's going to take probably about a week to get the building ready. So hopefully we can stay out here for another, for a little while anyway, until, I, what do you think the breaking point is probably 32? Okay. Well, maybe, maybe 35. Okay. We can. <laughs> But uh, so we'll we'll be heading in soon, and uh, this has been a great summer, and I know we got a lot of uh, a lot of people liking this, so we'll continue to do this maybe next summer. You know, maybe if it's not 95, but you know, if it's nice out. But uh, let's begin with the prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the day and for the blessings of life, and and for uh, this time that we can be together just to uh, be encouraging to one another and and to praise you. Thank you for loving us. We love you and thank you for, uh, most of all, uh, for Jesus who makes all this possible. Thank you for his love for us. And we pray that you'll bless us in our time and be with all those who are just mentioned for continued prayers for healing, for comfort and peace. And we thank you and uh, give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song will be number 369, More About Jesus.
More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne, riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming Prince of Peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Our song before communion will be number 432. Number 432, Jesus keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find Rest beyond the river, near the cross a trembling soul. Love and mercy found me, there the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadow o'er me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. morning church. Amen. So Brother Willie Franklin when he was here he, he really touched on the importance of connections and something that's quite remarkable is the connection we have through Jesus when we take communion. And he said he is the vine we are the branches and the more connected we are to Jesus the more we can truly have connections that are impactful in the world around us. So um, that's our thought for this morning as we take communion is to see how truly connected we are to Jesus, and what a great privilege that is. So if you would, please pray with me as we give thanks for the bread. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your love, for sending Christ to die for us. And we're thankful for this bread that represents his body, that we be, can be connected to him from now to eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. at this moment let's also think of the blood uh, which connects us to Jesus and the uh, the power that we truly have through his sacrifice dear Lord we thank you for Christ Jesus uh, the greatest gift that you could give and how selfless that was 
We just pray that we can be more selfless every day and that we can find ways to give our time and our attention to others and to help them to see you through us. And it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and give thanks for this fruit of the vine. Amen. And at this time, um, as we know now, not separate and apart from communion, uh, let's give thanks uh, and consider the church and the needs of our community and the impact the church can have when we give to God and, and support our local church and uh, look to those in need. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We know everything is from you and that we are just stewards on this earth for a short time uh, to take care of the things you've given us, to be wise with them, to be generous and to reach others. So we just pray that you uh, bless the contribution and that its impact uh, will be fruitful to bring others to Jesus. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. After the sermon, the song was going to be number 578, Trust and Obey. Trust and Obey. And before the prayer and the sermon, we're going to sing number 496, This World is Not My Home. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Please bow your head and go to God in prayer with me. <coughs> Dear Father, we're so thankful that we're able to gather here today as part of a family, brothers and sisters, all of us. Father, as we're gathered here, we also want to glorify you. We want to sing praises to you and make sure that you know that this is your day. Father, as we're gathered together, we also want to ask that you be with us that you support those who are in need, those who were mentioned earlier by Steve, those who are going through difficult times. Be with them and strengthen them. Have your hand upon them and use us as your tools and instruments. Father, we, we also want to pray that during these troubled times for all of us, that you're with us. That you help us to remember that you are, you are our rock. Father, as you've told us, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Help us to remember that, Father. Help us to increase in faith at this time. Help us to remember our hope that is you and your son. Father, as we're 
gather here together on this day, your day. Help us to look at one another, to not only see those who we can encourage, but also to see brothers and sisters, the family that you've created through your son. Help us to remember that we're here to build one another up, to support one another, that through your son's commands and his actions, we act as he did, we can support one another. Father, as we go forward today, we pray that Mark, as he presents this lesson from your word, that you help us to open our hearts, open our minds, to listen intently, to learn and grow in all ways that we can spiritually. Help us to really focus on you, Father. This is your day. The glory that we are giving should be brought to you. Help us to remember that all things that you've created on this earth, that you have created them, that everything we see around us is from you, whether it be the geese on the hill, or whether it be the trees, the grass, that everything is from you. And help us to remember that as we go through our day today and through the rest of the week. Father, we just thank you for the love that you've shown us, the love that is beyond comprehension for us. The love that was shown through your son, and the love that has been shown through your plans since the beginning of time. Father, we love you. We thank you for the love that you've shown us. Grant us strength and wisdom as we move into the rest of the day. Be with us, Father. Thank you for your great plan of salvation. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Good morning. I am not a weatherman or the son of a weatherman. <laughs> That's clear, or I'd have a jacket on. But, uh, you know, who would ever thought we would experience all the seasons out here? Uh, <laughs> I guess we haven't experienced snow yet. Maybe we'll be inside before that. But it's been an interesting year. It is 2020. I want to introduce you to someone today. My cousin is with us this morning. Her name is Chris Osborne. I almost said Anderson, but she is Mary Osborne. Uh, she has taken a job up in Columbus and uh, and they're moving here from the deep south, from Georgia, eventually. And so we're glad to have her with us today. And uh, did you raise your hand? Yeah. Okay. You were not allowed to ask her anything about when I was younger. <laughs> we did grow up together. She knows all about me. I am her favorite cousin. That's as much as I'll tell you. But it is good to have her here and to have all of you here. One time there was a lame duck president who met with his successor in the Oval Office. And near the end of their conversation, sort of an orientation to the Oval Office, he presented the incoming leader with three numbered envelopes. And he gave him specific instructions to open them in order when, whenever great difficulties arose. So several months later, after the president had sort of had his honeymoon period with the, with the press and the media and the public, uh, the nation experienced an economic downturn. So the president opened the first envelope. Inside, there was a card that said, blame me. And so he did. He criticized the former administration for the for the economic hard times. Some, some more time passed and, and after that uh, there was some social unrest in the country and a, a domestic crisis arose as a result and, and so the president opened the second envelope. Inside there was a card that said, blame my party. And he did so. 
in just sort of an overt display of partisan politics. He blamed the opposing party. About a year after that, foreign policy resulted in some serious problems and, and the president decided it was time to open the third envelope. He did so and inside there was a card that said, prepare three envelopes. <laughs> So that's sort of the way it goes, I guess, in politics. As, uh, as we're thinking about these things and as elections approach, I hope that you'll exercise your right and privilege as a citizen to express your opinion on uh, who should lead our nation at all levels. I think the following quote is a good reminder to all of us, someone said, quote, bad politicians are elected by good citizens who do not vote. I want us to turn to Romans chapter 13 and look at it from a bit of a different angle today. Instead of addressing us directly, I want to address elected officials with the sermon that I would preach to them if I had the opportunity uh, after they were elected. So this is the sermon that I would preach to whoever gets elected. But I think you'll see as, as we look at it that it applies to all of us. I think these are things we all need to be in agreement with, these, these principles in our lives, not just governors and presidents and congressmen and senators. But again, if I had the opportunity, if I had a, a, a sermon that I would preach to those who get elected, it would go like this. Congratulations on your election. I am praying for you as you begin to exercise the powers of your office. But I want you to know why I'm praying for you and what I'm praying for you. I do not want you to think that my saying I am praying for you is some token Christian slogan. Because it means something. And the meaning comes from God as it's revealed in his holy book. I'd like to share a passage of scripture with you that speaks first of all to Christians and discusses their responsibilities as citizens under government. But it also states some basic principles that I think you as an elected official need to know or need to be reminded of. This ancient text from Paul has something to say to you. It's found in the 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans in the first century AD. J.W. Allen, a prominent historian, said the following about this passage, quote, the 13th chapter of Romans contains what are perhaps the most important words ever written for the history of political thought. Yet it would be a gross mistake to suppose that men at any time took their political opinions from Paul. Well, despite what men and women have done in the past, I hope you will seriously consider what Paul says in this text because it contains truth that can make all the difference in your efforts to govern. Romans 13, 1 through 7. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. 
Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. As you can see, there is a lot spoken there to Christians about their responsibility to the state. We are to submit. We are to behave ourselves. We are to obey laws and pay taxes and show respect. And we are obviously to pray for those who are in power, people just like you. But this passage from Paul also speaks to you. It says a few basic things that are true whether you believe them or not. I hope you believe them, but they remain true regardless. The first thing of importance that it tells you as a government official is that your authority comes from God. It does not come from the power of your personality or the number of your votes or the title of your office. It comes first and foremost from God. Jesus Christ himself said this while on the earth, just moments before he was hung on a cross to die for your sins and mine, he was standing before a governor, the governor of that day, a man named Pilate. Pilate was one who thought his power originated from himself, or at least it originated from Caesar. But Jesus told him, while in chains, he said to him, you would have no power at all if it were not given you from above. I would impress upon you the exact same truth. All authority in heaven and on earth derives ultimately from God, including yours. Things will go so much more smoothly for you if you believe this and if you rule in that light. It will give you the humility you need to lead well. And it will give you the right perspective to begin with. You see, while the separation of church and state may be a good democratic principle that's worthy to be upheld, you must realize that there is no separation of God and state. All authority comes from him. The second important principle is close unto the first. You, elected official, are a minister of God. Yes, your authority comes from God, but even beyond that, Paul says that your role, your responsibility, the very direction of your work comes from God as well. Wherever you work in government, your responsibility, boiled down to its essence, is basically twofold. First, you are to promote and reward good behavior. And second, you are to restrain and punish evil. Promote the good, punish evil. That is your work. That's true whether you're president 
or governor, senator, representative, sheriff, or cabinet member, or judge. You are to call good, good, and evil, evil. Promote the one and defeat the other. God's word says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to them. Be careful. This may be one of the most common sins of politicians of all stripes. Your first responsibility is not to your party or your base, but to what is good. Government exists not for its own sake, but for the sake of its citizens. It seeks their good, first and foremost. Here it is a hard truth for government to sometimes learn and accept. Your Christian citizens should always submit to your authority and rule with one major exception. And that is, if you ever ask us to do evil or to be disloyal to our God and Savior, in that case, we cannot submit. Even if it costs us our freedom or our lives, we must obey God rather than men, ultimately. You see, there, there are certain things as Christians that we are not allowed by our God to do. For instance, if you go back one chapter in this book of Romans to chapter 12, it says that Christians are forbidden to take vengeance on others. It says this in Romans 12, verse 17. Paul writes, Repay no one evil for evil, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But we, what we as Christians are not allowed to do, you in government are called upon by God to do. Notice what the apostle wrote in this text in Romans 13, verse 4. He's speaking of government officials and he says, he is God's servant for your good. He does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. You must carry out this role for our society to be a healthy and fair and just place for all people. We as Christians are encouraged by Paul in another passage, 1 Timothy chapter 2, to be in prayer for all government officials. It says this, 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions. And then we're given a reason for all this prayer in the very next words. It says that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. You are a minister of God. And then finally, I would put one more thing before you. And that is this, that submission does not mean inferiority. What I mean is this, we as citizens are called on by God to, to submit to you, but it is for God's sake, not yours. You are God's servant, just as we are. We submit to your God-given authority, but we do not worship you or follow you blindly. You will always find that our loyalty 
goes first to our God and our Savior. In the words of another great apostle of Jesus, Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, he said, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. As an elected official, you've come to a position of authority. You have made a great achievement, but you are still a human being just like us. We have different roles in life, but we're under the same God. One people under God. That is more than just a slogan to us. And we hope it's more than just a slogan to you. Let's pray. Our holy God, we bow in your presence on your day to praise your name, to acknowledge you as our God and our creator, to remember your son, and to be a witness to our world that there are people who believe. Thank you for this day. May it uh, give us opportunities to serve you and to love our neighbor. And we want to obey your word where it says to pray for those in power in our world. We ask your blessings on all of them, whether they're people that we support personally or not, that you will give them wisdom and health and that we will be good citizens thank you for the privilege of living where we live in the time that we live give us strength to get through difficult times and to come out the other side and to learn how you want us to serve thank you for jesus who died for us thank you for his blood shed for us and the salvation it offers us and the great hope we have because of it. And we pray today in his name, Jesus, amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is best if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.
morning, church. I'd like to have you help me do one thing before I say the last prayer. It was his birthday yesterday. We need to sing it. So help me. Wish him his 23rd birthday. <laughs> he paid me to say that. So let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mark. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Now bow your heads with me and pray. Lord, please go forth with us today. Bless all of those who are out there that really need your help. Open your arms to the ones that have passed this week. And open your arms to the ones that are very sick and need your help. Please bless our government, our government officials, those who run our free country. No matter who you are, what Republican or Democrat party you are, let's all come together in this desperate time and love you and take care of you and believe in you. Take care of all the people out there that do not believe in you and have them come to you with open arms and say, please, Jesus, take me in. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs>